We have Zion, Bailey, and Anaya here talking about humility, sports, being spiritually grounded, and understanding what it is to represent the country. What's one thing you wish that those who aren't track athletes knew about track? Um, I feel it's the patience. It doesn't come overnight. You could you could come to practice and play around, but there will be people who will be dedicated and they will leave you behind. What would you say for each of you? What's the best piece of advice y'all have gotten? My coach and I say, relax. Like, relax. You practice for it. You know what you got to do. So I suggest yourself for taking these. Have fun. Because the main part of the event is to have fun. If you don't have fun and you just freaking out when you do bad, do good, that's going to affect your whole mood. What do you feel like? What what things we have to do like to be the best country no matter what? Knock off the I giants. I go first. With Bahamians, we have it too good. Like, mm-hmm. Places like Jamaica and other small places, their their reason of track is to get out of there. With Bahamians, we eat junk food. We just lazy. The people party. You know, I don't personally. <laughs> but it's like, I don't party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Fanatic Islanders. We are here with a very special sign bar sit down. We have, and I'll let them introduce themselves, some of the up and coming stars on the Carifta scene for track and field for none other than Team Bahamas. We we'll start with the lady on my right. My hello, my name is Anaya Roll and I do pole vault. Hi, my name is Bailey Major and I do triple jump. <laughs> my name is Zion Miller and I run the 400. Okay, I just wanted to know what this actually means to each of you. I know first we have high school sports, then we have into high school sports, and now we are at Carifta with the country on our chest. What does it mean for each of you to be able to participate? Okay, well, I'll go first. Not to get mushy or anything, but I'm very thankful to get this experience because I recently just started track. And last year, I wasn't able to make teams at the beginning of the season because just of, like, the difficulties of just starting track. But now this year, that I have the ability to represent Team Bahamas in Grenada. I am very excited and proud of myself that I can accomplish that. Baby. Okay. <laughs> um, for me, it means that I can do anything and put my mind to as long as I trust in God and my coach and my training. Um, I'm proud to be representing the Bahamas again in another international meet, and I hope to look forward to many more. So. I Well, for me, last year I missed out on Carifta due to injury. So, and before this um, trials came up, I got injured again for like two months. Mm. So the fact that I could make the team, it shows my potential, and hopefully in Carifta I could show what God had put for me, and yeah. It's a special one for me this year. Oh. Hoping to come back with some medals. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. That's what we need. <laughs> you need the medals, man. So one of you mentioned you would have just started. So can can y'all just give me a little bit of background on how you all got started in track or what you were doing before track, if there was something? Previously, before I started track, well, I did track in primary school and I stopped. I did swimming and then I stopped. And I did gymnastics for 12 years. And I lost the passion for it. And that's when I started track. And I started long jump. Wasn't very good at it. Then I switched to pole vault and exceeded very well in it. I did, okay, I did ballet. Stopped also, lost the passion. I did gymnastics. Ended up liking it a lot. But I did it for like 10, 10 years, I think. But then I started track and I realized that I had a passion for it, and I was good at it. This is what I want to do. And I took off from there on triple jump, and I also did very well in it. And I'm here because of my triple jump right now, so I'm grateful. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, well, for me, I played basketball and baseball most of my life. Mm-hmm. So track came up randomly. It was twenty, like late 2020. I just see my... Um, I saw my cousins out there training. I was like, what they doing over there? I want to do what they doing. Yeah. And I started in like September of 2020. I trained and then my first meet was sometime in December. And I ended up coming second in all two of my races. And it was like, 
it's kind of fun and i was actually decent at it yeah and then after that i just kind of stuck and i dropped the sports that i was doing previously so hmm. yeah that's interesting so that means y'all kind of like natural runners natural jumpers because like that is that usually the way it goes like you just stop everything and go in the track yeah like how did how was the transition i mean for the ladies how was the transition from gymnastics to triple jump or pole vote and then from you like transitioning that kind of short area quickness from basketball into now the sprints because you're what four the 400 yeah four yeah two. so from running a whole a full court versus 400 meters that's a complete difference so that is a little bit of the transition between the the events I feel as though for me personally, the transition was not as hard because in gymnastics, growing up the many years I did it, we normally work hard. We have something called conditioning and then we have bars, beam, vault, and floor for, floor for different events we have to train for. And really and truly, I feel as though the workout in gymnastics was way harder than the workout in track. So it was very easy to transition oh, wow. over to personally. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> okay the transition for me it also wasn't as hard because of the conditioning and stuff from gymnastics but it became like a hard decision because i really like gym and going to track i realized like i'm good at this i can excel more on this so it's kind of challenging but i ended up choosing track and i'm happy so hmm. Well, for me, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> I love baseball. Like, yeah. baseball, that's my heart. But when you really think about it, you could get along further in track because baseball is a team sport. Mm -hmm. So it's like with track, you could focus on you. If you mess up, that's on you. But it wasn't really hard for me. Like, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to get it. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to do the work because I'm a competitor. I want to win. Mm -hmm. And once I see I start running fast, I was like, hey. <laughs> you got some milk. Yeah, I mean, you earned some milk. And I like traveling for free, so. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, I can't complain. I can't complain. I mean, I can't complain yeah. 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 So I, let's really take it some things yeah. like because I feel like. They probably think I old. I probably ain't that old, but you know, <laughs> they probably think I old. So. I get that. Yeah. So I just want to know, like, what kind of music, what kind of media outlets y'all use to get yourself relaxed, to get in tune when y'all ready to compete? What do y'all listen to? Like, what do y'all watch? Um. Any artist in particular? I feel as though my playlist is consistent of a lot of things. <laughs> I have. Well, you can name them. <laughs> I have. I know one of my top favorites are SZA, and I don't. I can't really remember the rest I have, but I do have a lot of different song artists I listen to before I compete. Okay. Um, okay. For me, it depends on my mood. If I'm really nervous, I normally would chew gum a lot, mm. like during jumping, warming up. Tell me it's over. Actually, I chew gum. Um, for music, I also have a lot of different song artists. I'm just gonna give y'all top three, mm, top three, top three, top three. <laughs> 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 um, I don't even. I like Frank Ocean, I think. Um, let me see. I just don't even remember right now. The other ones, I even remember the song of another artist. Okay. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that works fine. <laughs> Next. Uh, Wait, you want to sing, sing songs? Uh, I, mean, I can give you some of the songs that I used to work out. If you don't have to, it's a give and take. Like uh, for me, like if I go on to Google Lift, I'd probably listen to depending on now if it's like a deadlift. Mm. No, I lie, not that. If it's deadlift, it's probably classical music because I need to kind of like mellow my mind. They was out. ready for that. They was ready for right. that. Right. It's when <laughs> But I mean she's been listening to Frank Ocean before she goes to jump. So I yeah, feel like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's something to mellow you out before you pick up something heavy. But if it's like bench press, well I feel like it could drop on my chest if I go on heavy, then I gotta listen to like some T Grizzly yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. some some Kodak or something just to you know psych myself up to make they sure know, they don't know who T Grizzly is. Wow. Okay, maybe I'm going <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, what about you All right, well for me, normally I don't really get nervous and stuff, but mm -hmm. I like to keep my mind off it for as long as possible. So nine times out of ten, I'd probably watch like Kevin Hart, you know, get a good laugh and wow. watch it, watch some, you know, relax yourself. Yeah. But when it comes to music, it depends. Like if I 
out of the regulars, Bahamas, me, I probably listen to like Kirk Franklin or something, you know, because I like, wow, I like the, you know, little groove. Sometimes yeah, I listen to, yeah. uh, <laughs> I like the 2016, 2015 type of songs. I'm from Freeport, that's all we listen to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like, mm-hmm. Young Thug, Future, you know, people like Atlanta, them. Atlanta. Atlanta. But <laughs> I don't like to lose. So, when I come second in the race, mm. that next me's personal. I, <laughs> I don't even listen to music. I just lock in. Yes. Before I practice, I'm going to watch that video. You beat me this time. Okay, that's cool. Mm. They're coming back. It's the mom they come back strong. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it for me. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, you mentioned free travel. Have any of you actually <laughs> been to Grenada? Uh, is this, is this going to be all of your first time? Yep. Yeah. What yeah. is one of the things outside of the meat, if you all have time, that you're looking forward to experiencing mm. when you go? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I'm working on. Um, probably getting to see with the people who live in Grenada actually visualize every single day. Get that that, that nice cultural experience. Mm. Mine's <laughs> mine was really like that. I wanted to see um it was like a certain picture I saw Grenada with like waterfalls and like it's like a cave, a pond. I really wanted to see that. So hopefully, if we have time, they take us there. Well, that would be good. My realistic answer. I mean, <laughs> I want to try the food. I oh, love yeah. food, so I want to try. But if it's let me know, I don't know. I want to try the food. Any food in particular? No, just whatever looks good. They have dumplings. Sound like you wanted them. Um, I hope they sell dumplings. Okay. Mm, Got to get your dumplings in. That Big question. Good, How do y'all balance schoolwork? Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Me personally, I am a grandma. Anytime <laughs> I come to school, I cram for stuff. So exams, I study one week before exams or the night before. If, if I have track and field and I see exams coming too close to me, I sometimes take a break from track for that one week and study that whole week. And then after that, I come back and work off all the time I was on for rest. But I normally cramp and that's how I mix my schedule together. Wow. I do not cramp. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot cramp. I don't remember nothing. So I normally like... If the teacher would get some that day, I'd have to like review it that day and then like maybe later on in the week just for the test. Like I actually had to study because I don't really remember things easy, but I volunteered out good, I guess. So it's funny you say that because <laughs> <laughs> before I started track, school yeah. was cool. Like I was a principal to this every year. The minute I started track, boy, it, that's that's all. <laughs> it's Mm, it's kind of hard because I reach home nine o'clock every day. Yeah, and it's like I like school, but sometimes it's like, do I want to do schoolwork or do I want to sleep? Mm. So when I lay on that carpet and I say, you know what, let me open this book. By the time I like, pick up the book, Sleeping. I don't pass. Them. Yeah. So it's it's tough, but it's possible. You just have to know what you want. Yeah. So if you really want to do good in school and get somewhere, you're gonna do it. But it is not easy at all to balance it. So any favorite subjects, favorite teachers? Oh, no. Uh-huh. I lie. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had to think. Okay. Um, my favorite subject is PE. I like learning how to do different sports like volleyball and basketball, soccer. Um, my favorite teachers, I like my few teachers, um, Ms. Moochie. Oh, uh, Miss Adelie, Coach Edwards, <laughs> <laughs> my math teacher, <laughs> my math teacher, Miss Chambers, my language teacher. I like most of my teachers. I don't have a problem. It's just the work. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have any favorite subjects. I actually don't think I have any favorite teachers Ooh. either. Your life. Mm, you better stop. <laughs> <Your life. laughs> you I, go back to school now. Yeah, I don't have any favorite teachers nor any favorite subjects. You everybody are, fly. Just fly. Everybody just are fly. the same equally to me. Well, gets, everybody gets love. Yeah, All is love. Fair. <laughs> the crazy thing is, currently I have like a C and P. But hear me out. <laughs> 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 I, 
I mean, my my teachers ask me that all the time. It's like you're a top athlete, you got a C and P, but if you get they do form, man. no, they do sports that I am not comfortable doing because I don't want to risk anything. Like mm. soccer, yeah, so it's stuff like soccer and um, basketball and down. stuff. Yeah, like ah, uh, I don't want to miss and twist my ankle, get mm. pushed too hard. You know, I, I I ain't in for no yeah. Yeah, but people call me crazy. I like accounts. I have an A in account. This is, a, this is a good analytical mind, man. Yeah. So, yeah, because it's kind of easy. You just have to pay attention. People just make it seem hard. Yeah. Uh, wait. Oh, favorite teacher? Shout out to Mr. Ramen. He's a cool dude. He makes sure you pass that class. He don't stress you out too much. If all our teachers was like that, I would have been, been passing. Flying colors. But, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, you mentioned schoolwork, favorite teachers. Just talk to us a little bit about how things are with your community, like your coaches, family, friends. Like, how do they fit into, like you say, getting home at nine o'clock at night, yeah. still having school each and every day, and getting into practice? Um, I feel like my parents are very dedicated to me and my sports because over the years I was a very busy body child, and to take up your whole life just to drive me around, get me food, make sure I eat. <laughs> complete um help with my mood swings when i hungry i thank you for that um i have a lot of supportive friends bailey zion kenny moxie jr cheyenne zoe Coy. Mm-hmm. all my friends are very supportive and yeah she like her friends more than the teachers <laughs> um, yeah. yeah for sure for sure for sure yeah <laughs> um i say my Supporter circle is very big, especially my mom. She's mainly like my number one supporter. Like she pays for every everything, and she just she takes time out of work to like drop me a practice, pick me up, and sometimes she would travel with me to my different national events just so I'm comfortable. So I thank her for that, and I say my friends are really also very supportive and very happy for me. Um, Anaya, uh, Tyler, Mia, Luvin. Sydney, a couple of more of my friends are including that, but I'm not going to get into that. That's a long list. But, like, yeah, I see my community is really close together and supportive. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how, do, how is your community? So that's inclusive of friends, family, coaches. Like, how, how do they support you through your journey? Oh, well. We can circle yeah. back. We can circle back. That's fine. <laughs> my family full of track athletes. So everyone already understand. And then... They some lively people. When they see me, they see me turn up the tracks. They jumping up, my from my Grammy jumping up. That's how you know. That's <laughs> it's serious. With friends, uh, hmm. I don't really have no close friends, but I know everybody. So mm. it's like, but someone in particular who loves to support me is Nabi Jamia Nabi Jamia Nabi. She's a very kind-hearted person. She'd be nice on this part. I like she do shy for that. Eh? But yeah, <laughs> 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 but yeah. And my coach, shout out to my coach. He's a very good dude. Like, he's not just a coach. He's like a friend. You know, you yeah. could go to him for anything. Darren Lightborn, shout out to you. So, yes, yeah, like, I have a nice circle. My Grammy, you know, I stress out, but she can she, make sure it gets yeah, done yeah. by any means. So, I appreciate her for that and everyone else. So, yeah, it goes along well. That's good. Okay, any more shout outs? I see yeah. <laughs> okay. I have I have a shout out to make to my two coaches, Coach James Roll, who is my uncle, and Kenny Moxie. Yeah. I just wanna say thank you to James Roll for opening this door for me with Pole Vault because without you I would have never been the first female to ever try it and make it international team. And there you go. There you go. Kenny Say that one more time, man. Say it one more time. Say it one, um, one more time. I would have never been the first female to make Pan Am and compete and make a record. And I thank you for that. And Kenny Moxie, I thank you for pushing me. I thank you for being there for me. I thank you for training me day and night, even though you say you have better things to do. <laughs> I thank you for that. And I really appreciate you both more than you know. Yeah, I'd like to give a, a shout out to my 
Red Line family, all the Red Line coaches, Coach Tito Moss, head coach, and also my triple jump coach, Coach Edwards, Coach Jason Edwards. Um, he put a lot of time to me to get this triple jump down, fact, especially the different step phases. And watching like old videos from old jumpers just to make sure oh, I'm comfortable with this form and this technique. So I really like, um, my coach is like, he's like family because, you know, we talk a lot of practice, but we get the work done. We get the work yeah. done. But yeah, he pushes me to the best I can be, which is why I'm here now. And yeah. Well, I want to say all the coaches are great, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> all the coaches are great. Mm-hmm. Everyone, you know. Everyone is used to dealing with kids, so it's like they'll come more, so, well, some will come more, you know, passive towards the athletes. They'll motivate them, you know, help them with any little thing because at the end of the day, we're all a family. It's not just, oh, you're on that team, stay over there. Everyone's, you know, together, everyone knows each other. Yeah. So, yeah, shout out to all the coaches because everyone's great. And Tito, too, yeah. He, <laughs> he helps me a lot yeah. mentally because with the 800, like BISS, that was my first time running, and I was like, I don't know what to do. So I just, he was the first person that was like, I'm gonna go to him. Yeah. And he was like, Sign, you got this. You a sprinter. All you gotta do, sit, kick. And I listened, and now we're here running that for Crypto. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, shout out to Mr. Moss. Cool. So, what would you say for each of you? What's the best piece of advice y'all have gotten to take y'all, like in your events, to take you to the next level? You got to trust God. You got to trust your coaches. You got to trust the process and you got to trust the training. You got to trust that whatever you do in practice is going to, God is going to take you where he wants to take you. If God doesn't want you where you think you want to go, he's going to show you that that's not where you're supposed to be. So that's what I have to say about it. Hmm. Yeah, you gotta trust God, but for me, it was just like, my coach and I say, relax, like, relax. You practice for it, you know what you gotta do. So stressing yourself for taking these, have fun, because the main part of the event is to have fun. If you don't have fun and you just freaking out when you do bad, do good, that's gonna affect your whole mood, especially if you do, especially when you have to do other events. So just relax, take it easy, and trust God, and trust your coach training. So. Well, for me, it was. Be a, be a student. Learn to accept information and take it in as it is. Mm. Because I'm new to the sport. Yeah. Half most other um, track athletes, they think they know what they're doing because they've been doing it for X amount of years. Yeah. But the coaches are a coach for a reason. So listen to the coach. Mm. Make sure to pray, and um, just relax mostly because. If you're tensed up and nervous, you're not going to perform to the best of your abilities if you're overthinking it. So, yeah, just be a student and try not to know it all. You know, be a smart more than anything. Yeah. All right. what's, what's one thing you wish that those who aren't track athletes knew about track? Can I start first so I don't forget the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's not just running in the oval. It's not just physical. It's mental. And then... Behind the scenes, we're working hard, so I don't think you should know disrespect the sport because everyone makes it seem like it's so easy. But if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, respect my sport. <laughs> <laughs> Only respect. one thing I would say is it's a lot. Of, it's a lot more than just running around a circle or in a circular motion around the track. It's the hours and time you put into it. Um, balancing it up with school and other sports you have to do and the determination and like you can't just show the practice just to show the practice you gotta commit like mm. commitment so yeah um, I feel it's the patience it doesn't come overnight you could you could come to practice and play around but there will be people who will be dedicated and they will leave you behind track and field is not a sport where you do relay and you have to depend on other people to get you around to come in first place. You have to work by yourself to get what you want. Well, can I add on to it? Yeah, my word. Well, with track two, it's, for me personally, it's mostly mental. Like mentally, if you're not there, you're not going to get too far because it was some, before I was more confident than I am now, it was like, am I good enough? Can I do this with the training? I've, I've been feeling this. You know, it's, it's so much things that goes on in your head, especially when you're competing with such high-level people. 
and people who's been in the sport longer than you. Yeah. So it's like, and you can't compare yourself. Like, I can't compare myself to an average athlete because, you know, I'm not an average athlete. So it's like, when I look at people like Usain Bolt and Steven Gardner, they're doing amazing things, but I'm not them. So I can't base my pace and progression off of them because they're two completely different athletes. We grow up differently. You know, it's it's so much thing. So it's mostly mental. You have to be mentally strong and prepared and ready to put your body on the line in order to get far. So, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm back again. To add on to what Zion said um, about mentally, you have to have positive people around you. If you mentally, I don't want to say mentally unstable, but like if you if you mentally discouraged, you can't have discouraged people around you because you just pulling each other down. That don't make no sense. You have to have positive people in your circle who could help you and you could help them back in return. That's it. It's <laughs> powerful. But yeah, it's obvious all of you are students of the game. Is there any athlete in particular y'all like to study the most? Mondo Duplantis. He has the world record for pole vault of 623 meters. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she ain't she ain't she ain't crown for that. Yeah, man. <laughs> she got that down box. <laughs> um. <Yeah. laughs> okay, I don't know her PB right now. I think she jumped like fourteen, fifteen. Rojas, I love to watch her jump her step fast. So. Oh, crazy thing. I don't. I don't really watch track. So mm-hmm. I don't really have a athlete in particular. Yeah. But I like to watch in person Steven run or Shawnee because it's like that's cool, you know, you Bahamians too. Yeah. And y'all doing it and y'all doing it big, so I like to watch them but not really have anyone in particular. So yeah. Okay, understood. understood. Uh, what is some of give me one short term goal? So it's looking at the career fair that's coming up, and then one long term goal. Because I think all of you are either in grade eleven or twelve. So yeah. let's just say a few years down the line. So a career fair goal, and then a future goal. I want to go. All right. <laughs> well, short term, right now, is to get my body back one hundred percent because I just came off injury like two or three weeks ago. So it's a blessing that I made the team. So it's just right now to get back in the game mentally and physically and get ready for World Juniors at the end of the year. Long term, uh, long term is... Hmm. It's a long ways away. Yeah, it's a long ways away. But I would want to be spiritually and mentally sound. I would want to have at least two or three titles in like three four years span not no no regular titles like something built like world juniors or like olympics you know something something that i could be proud to say i did this and not everyone could just say it you know so yeah that's something that i'd like to do um i would like to work towards what well, short-term goal work towards world juniors also and crypto would i would like to pb jumping 13 13. 13 high. Yes. Um, I'm bringing home a gold medal. And long term, um, I like to settle down with, you know, with college or like further. However, however further you, you want. want. However far you want to take it. <laughs> um, I'll go to college then. Uh, hopefully looking at a great college with a good jump coach. Um, holding a record in the state or in that area and being able to complete compete in the Olympics with all the higher athletes, the better triple jumpers, just to show oh I can be here too. Yeah, I came from the Bahamas, yeah y'all have more but I can put up a fight too. I hear. Yeah, I hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for short term goal, when I go to Grenada I would like to come first and um break my record of 285 and hopefully come back with a medal and for long term I want to go off to college study agriculture 
I want to be able to find a good pole vaulting coach where I can further off my career and hopefully get to jump with the people I look up to in the many years to come. So top one college, I ain't giving y'all top three. Top one. <laughs> <laughs> my top one college right now has to be Western Kentucky University in Kentucky. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, my top one college right now would probably be Florida State University because of Levon Sands, mm. the coach. So yeah. What's the major? Something, something in the um, bio field, probably medical field. May change, yeah. but we'll see. That's understandable. Yeah. Can it please be top three? <laughs> <laughs> I like you want, get office already, man. I, I don't want to hurt feelings. <laughs> okay, man. Say, okay, you can okay top, top three, top three top in no order. Um, Oral Roberts, because I know the coach there personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it? Um, The Gators University. Florida. Florida. Yeah, Florida. <laughs> Florida. Yeah, and then. <laughs> What's the next one? The next one. Mm, tech, Texas Tech. I wouldn't mind going there. Texas Tech. No, oh, bad. All right, this is like middle. So accounts. Accounts. <laughs> no. Whoa. No. What? Yeah. what? Oh, you have an A. I have an A, but I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of stress and, you know, dealing with people's money. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't get Man, they can help you with your own money, too. Yeah, like, that's why I'm doing it in school. <laughs> 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 so I don't have to do it later down the line. Yeah. But uh, some some branch of engineering or plumbing. The reason I say plumbing, <laughs> because I feel like it's something not much people really want to do, mm. so it's going to be a high pay. So a lot of supply and demand. I wouldn't mind doing, you know, yeah, I'll go into the stink sewer, but that money coming in, so <laughs> yeah. I can be stink for long, you know. <laughs> yeah. Get, oh a smart mind. It's a very smart mind. Uh, let's lighten the mood a little bit. Talking about careers, colleges. What is something that you all like to do in your downtime? Uh, now, even if you're not supposed to have the free time because you're supposed to be training for Christmas, <laughs> what is something that you like to do in your free time? I would say listen to music. I feel like if I didn't have music in my life, I don't know what I would do. Because half of my, every time you see me, I either have my beats on, listening to music, or sleeping. I think that's all I be doing. <laughs> I like to watch movies and just be around positive energy like my friends or FaceTime my friends. Just have fun. Well, in my free time, I normally draw. Like, from grade four, I've been drawing, so it's like, it's kind of fun. But, I don't know, call me crazy. My free time, I like to do a lot of setups. But it's because I have nothing else to do. And you need a strong card to be able to, you know, run fast, so... Yeah, that's what I do on my free time. Sit up, so stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing sit ups, man. Yeah. Right, just pick up heavy stuff. <laughs> Gotta burn to get what you want. Say what? I, I want. I want to. I want to succeed and drop like badly. So We're I'm gonna do what it take. You hate losing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> do you take breaks? Do I take breaks? Yes. I mean, yes, you have to take a break. Mm -hmm. If you put in 90%, 95% work and 5% of mm -hmm. rest, you could get hurt or, you know, you can't perform to the best of your ability. So yeah. rest is a big factor in track. Mm -hmm. So it always is good to take rest. But when I work, I work. When I rest, I rest. So it's like, yeah. It's a great life philosophy. <laughs> now, what I have to say is... I feel like y'all are the now, not the future. You know, a lot of people like to say future. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all coach, coaches, your parents, they give y'all advice, but still ain't nobody else competing out there. That's y'all, so that's, this is y'all time. The only thing left from here is the top. So after this is y'all professionals. So what I want to know is beyond your coaches and your parents' advice, what do you do to make sure that, hey, y'all said all y'all got to say, it's time for me to compete. 
what do y'all do to make sure that you show up, get the first place, get the gold medal, and all that good stuff? Okay, so me, personally, every time I have a meet, the night before, like around 7, 8 o'clock p.m., I turn my phone on Do Not Disturb, and I ignore everybody until after I <laughs> jump, honestly. Even if I see you at the stadium, I will walk past you. I will not do no long talking. And people like to give pep talks. I don't do pep talks. I only take pep talks from my coaches. If my mom tries to give me a pep talk with my grandfather, I don't take it because not in a rude way, but you're not my coach. So you sometimes you don't know what you're talking about. But I understand you're doing it out of love, but like still that's what I do. And when I warm up, I listen to music. And when it's time to go into the call room and walk over to your event, I lock in until after I jump. For me, I just, okay, I don't like to talk about my event. Like, if I know I'm going to do it, I don't talk about it. I don't get my mind off it, you know, have fun. Not have fun, but, like, I chat, like, no, I do the opposite of what she does. Like, <laughs> my lock in is, like, okay, I know everybody, like, I'm talking to, let's say, Lanesha. I'm talking to um, Koi, or I'm talking to someone. I just, like, I like to interact with people so it helps me get comfortable in my environment because, yeah, I just like to be... Staying loose. Yeah. Yeah. And I, like, for me, I'm very competitive. So, okay, if I jump this and I think it's good, but then someone else comes and jumps further... No matter how, how big of a jump I did, no matter how far I'm going to go hard, I'm going to go fast. I like competition. That's just my nature. Well, for me, I don't really change nothing because if you try to isolate yourself and be so focused and hard on, you're going to overthink it. And it's going to be on your mind and you're going to, you know, you can feel it if you don't really, you know. Perform to the best of your abilities or what you thought you could have done. Me, normally, I just get off, you know, do what I got to do, chill out, just normal day, eat what I eat yesterday, you know. No, it don't make sense trying to switch it up because you're not used to it, so why do it? That's how I see it. So I'll yeah. just, you know, get off, do what I got to do. When it's time to run, it's time to run. But yet again, if I come second, then that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no talking, just, yeah. Yeah, I handle business. I like the different variations. Uh, I don't know what it is, but is it because you feel like pole vault is already a... Uh, I don't want. I don't want to say it's the riskiest, but it feel like the riskiest to me. Yeah. <laughs> it feel like the riskiest yes. to me. So you feel like in some way you have to lock in and like. I feel like everybody got to lock in, but it's like you. You already got lucky because you feel like you might break some, and then you have to go beyond that so you could win. So I'll never do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me, when I started pole vault, I was the only person. I there was many meets where I would well, not many, but like for the season, and even last year I did one or two meets. They were meets where I had to compete by myself, and then females from abroad who were in colleges mm -hmm. and eighteen years old and stuff like that. So even these meets when I came back and I had to compete by myself, I was always a lone pole vaulter. I was always by myself. And even then, I would still compete Anaya versus Anaya. And now I have somebody who I jump with and I jump against. And I feel as though even then I'd still lock in. I'd still block with everybody because I don't like to lose. <laughs> lose. I just don't like to lose. If you, when I was doing gymnastics, if you walk into my house, there is a medal stand with all my medals. And I don't like to lose. I don't feel like... I I would congratulate you. I'd say good job, congrats. But for me to lose, after that, I go silent. I wouldn't talk to nobody. But just know that next me, I'm not losing again. I mm -hmm. feel like that's it. Yeah, and with Triple Jump, we had a Triple Jump on the show as well. So I know there's a lot of force involved with that. How do you stay loose doing that event? <laughs> Um, I chew gum. Like that's my go to move. Like if Yeah. Yeah, I'd be talking. Like I would see him to many people I see him like, I'm not locked in, but I'm actually locked in. That's my form of locking in. Mm. I don't go silent, I don't distance. Cause when I think too hard about an event, it's like if my first jump isn't what it is, mm. I don't shut down but it's like you could tell it's not me. It's just yeah. I'm too focused. Not too focused, but like I'm too worried about not winning. And so I just like to 
take it easy, chew gum. I chew a lot. I chew gum very badly. I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> but it helps me relax. It helps me calm down. It helps me think about my set faces, what I need to do. And yeah, it gets me to the meat. Okay, okay. So we have. I show you know the question I want to ask. You have a question you want to ask? What's, What's the, the question? question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was making it specific for each yeah. person. Yeah. Oh, so, specific. Oh, yeah, I remember now. Yeah, so um, I know you you run the 400. You said they had you run the 800. Do you feel like you could run any race they asked you to run? <laughs> well, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to do what I got to do for my country, like, if anyone else not stepping up, I'll step up, you know? Mm. I feel like even if I don't do it or train for it, once I put my mind to it, I could do what I, you know, do what I'm good at. And, you know, just to see everything that I can do, you know? Yeah. Call just a, don't just don't want a 400 meter runner. Everyone can find a 100, 200 meter runner. Mm. But if you could run the 100, 200, you could do hurdles, you could jump, you know, they're going to look more into you. So, you, you know, get them times down, let them see, oh, you run this, that, and next. I like him. And I'm a foreigner, so. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Oh, you want to say something? Yeah, sorry to add back on again. But I feel as, because I was the first pole vaulter, I feel like I have a lot of pressure on me. And mm-hmm. I feel like I have high standards that have to be met, not only for myself, but I feel like I just have to prove my point. Prove why I should be doing pole vault and why... I am good at my sport and why I should be the one. Me and my teammate that we should be the ones to go and represent because we work just as hard as every other event, the four by one, the four, the one, long jump, triple jump. We are a field event and I feel as though we should be taken lightly as everybody else. That's it. Put your, put your snob on the map. I didn't really get the answer to the question. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> well what the... What, you good, you good. With the 400, mm. it's like in the Bahamas here, mm. there's just the same people you run with all the time. So it's like you get used to it. Mm. And the reason why I try to stay more mellow and relaxed because one mistake and that's it. Yeah. Because everyone's times are so close. Or, you know, it's hard to really make a mistake because once you make that mistake, it's going to be a pain to get it back. Yeah. So you really just have to trust yourself and relax. I feel like once you trust in yourself, God and coach, you're not going to stress about so much because you're going to be like, I got this. Yeah. You have to have the confidence in yourself that you could do it. So, yeah. Good. I mean, well, so 400 is your bread and butter or oh, everything is your bread and butter? Yeah, let's not. Let's stay humble. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the 400 is my bread and butter. But I recent like last year, I tried high jump, mm. and I jumped one ninety two, and I was like, <laughs> "Where'd I come from?" <laughs> so, so it was like, I should try other events to see what I could do. But I am not gonna try triple nor long jump because that's very, to- that's very taxing on your legs. And I'm a runner, not a jumper, so I don't wanna have to break up my legs and then have to go on the track and can't perform the way that I want to. So, yeah. 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 All right. So we, we've spoken a lot about um, some of the particular events, but as Zion has mentioned, you know, just about anything. They could do anything. It's about anything could be his bread and <laughs> yeah. butter. Yeah, I was doing gymnastics before and he's playing baseball and basketball. Are there any other track and field events that you all do train for or specialize in that you're not competing in in the upcoming draft? I like to go first, second round. Um, I could do the 200 meters, the 100 meter hurdles, the 400 meter hurdles, um, long jump, which I qualify for, but I did not get to go. So, yeah, but I'm going to be there next year, right. hopefully. Well, I'm only good at jumps. I can only jump. I don't like to run. Um, I am long jump and pole vault. That's about it. She focused. <laughs> she focused on that. No, boy. She said, I can't lose. Well, this is the Iron Man CrossFit or radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, when I was younger, I actually ran the 100 quite a bit before I started the 400. And I was actually kind of decent at it. When I was like 
14. Well, yeah, when I just turned 14, I ran like 11.5 and like 23 something. I was like, that's pretty decent for someone who just started track. So I ain't gonna lie to you, I thought I was gonna be a sprinter. But when I go on in that 400 and I saw that time, I said, oh boy. And it's kind of fun. I actually like the 400. It's, yeah. it's not too quick and it ain't too long. But I could do the 100, 200, 400, 800. I feel like if they was to put me in a 15, <laughs> I might not exactly like win, depending on who I'm running with. What you trying to but win? But I'm going to go for it because, like, yeah. yeah. I, like I said, I don't like losing. But I only train for the 400. I don't train for nothing else but the 400. Mm-hmm. And I could jump too so yeah i like to add on so yeah um i um i'm also a quarter miler uh two and four mainly before i started jumps and all of that um i joined redline athletics with coach tito moss and Rishante, coach Rishante and coach Chriselle and coach earl and coach roberts and um, i thought i was also going to be a sprinter because you know my first race was a 200 and Mind you, I never ran a 200 in my life. This is my first race. No form, no nothing. I'm uh, coming down. I came like second or third. And my coach looked at me and he's like, and she never did track before. After that, um, I worked with the sprinters for a while. And then one day we tried quarter miler. And my coach is like, that's you. <laughs> You're a quarter miler. Anything, nothing comes first before a quarter miler. So, yeah. I always run the four. Um, it's okay. I like it. I like I think I just need to work harder towards it. But yeah, that's what led me to the four hurdles because it's like if you could run this in the four, you know, let's see what you could do in hurdles. And I think my first year, my first year, first year, I think, doing hurdles, I qualified on the 17 last year. I was able to represent the Bahamas in the 400 meter hurdles. I came fourth, almost had there, but you know, yeah. So, uh. Lord, I would mm. like that and that <laughs> <laughs> with hurdles. <laughs> I started training for hurdles, and I feel like I could really take off with 400 meter hurdles, simply because I'm learning quick. Like I could already alternate legs, and I'm not scared to go over the hurdles. I'm not scared to fall. Mm. So if I fall, I'm gonna get back up. So it's like I feel like once I could get it down good enough to compete in level. I could actually do good in it. But at the same time, it's like some of them falls pretty nasty. So it's like I really trying to see if I really want to go through that or not. But I feel like once I start, it'll be like more easier for me to be confident and say, hey, I know I could fall or hurt myself, but we can go for it and we'll deal with it whenever it happens. (laughs) So, yeah. Well, I got something to say. I got. Oh boy. Um. So you know how they like to say, you know, he's the best small country. Mm-hmm. I want to know, because I feel like we need to be the best country. Period. <laughs> That's just me. So, what do you feel like? What What things we have to do like this year? Every year going forward to be the best country, no matter what, knock off the I giants. I want to go first. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah. I want to go first. <laughs> How do we win? No disrespect, first of all. But I feel like with Bahamians, we have it too good. Like mm-hmm. places like Jamaica and other small places, their their reason of track is to get out of there. You know, with Bah with the Bahamians. We have we have, we comfort, have what we need. Comfort. We comfortable, you know. Mm-hmm. Jamaicans want to get out of that situation. Yeah. So it's like they have more of a reason and determination to go get it. With Bahamas, we eat junk food. We just lazy. The people party, you know. I don't personally, word. but it's like <laughs> I don't party. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Zion. I did once. Zion. That was a birthday talk. party. Don't talk. Anyways, so <laughs> but yeah, I feel like with the Bahamas, if we were, I feel like we're more talented personally. Mm. No shots fired, but <laughs> I feel like if we were more determined and disciplined, we could be so much further than we are now. And with bigger meets, we'd be able to get more medals. I but agree. Yeah, 
Oh, who's going next? I'll go next. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, I feel like like we must be procrastinate a lot with other countries. If they need to do it, they'll get it done. There's no oh no stories to tell, no excuses, they'll just get it done with us. We do have it too good, but I feel like I'm not trying to do throw any shots out there, but I feel like Bahamians are just as good as Jamaicans. Like we just put them on a pedestal because we didn't do what we did in certain races which caused us to, you know, kinda downgrade ourselves because oh, they won this and won and won that. But if we were more determined and weren't as afraid not afraid but like nervous just to run against them or just to see them sometimes with some people it would just be like, it would be an even platform and whatever happens, happens. Okay, for me, and don't get me wrong, I feel as though Bahamian athletes are spoiled. Because we have all the facilities. We have high jump bed, pole bed, sand, javelins, all these other stuff, shop put nets. And some of the Jamaicans, some of the places like the Jamaicans don't even have that type of stuff or resources. We have the facilities, so why are we mm. not working and using them as we should? To be real and truthful, if we look at it, Bahamians, Jamaicans, St. Lucia's, all the other islands or Caribbeans are doing the same routine, the same workout. So why us, who have the facilities, can't do the same things with the Jamaicans who barely have the facilities are doing? I just feel as though we take things for granted, and that's why. I want to add on to it. Okay. Okay. So, with Bahamians and Jamaicans, is I feel like the Bahamians go into the meet. This is like Sock and QC. QC go into the meet already accepting defeat. <laughs> yeah, like, do it? Most of the mm-hmm. time, truthfully. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but. <laughs> this get deep just now. <laughs> <laughs> but with Bahamians, we, I feel like, well, no, we, majority. Of mm. the athletes already accept defeat. They're like, oh, they did this, they did that. We can't beat them. So just do what we could do. Like, with me, when I first beat a Jamaican, it wasn't like, oh, my goodness, I did this. It was more like a, well, I won. <laughs> because I feel like... You versus men- you. Yeah, it's me versus me. I, mentally, I'm strong enough to believe in myself and say that you bleed how I bleed, you tired, I'm tired, we can see who's the bigger man today. I don't feel like you should accept defeat, you should go in confidence saying, I could win or I could medal, you know, to come for more of a comfort thing because you can't go there scared and then you show it on your face. Once a Jamaican see that, they got you mentally. They go on. Yeah. Yeah. They go on toy with you, and they go on play around with you. So yeah, I feel like we shouldn't accept defeat right away and try to put up a fight before saying, "Oh, we're gonna lose" because there's a Jamaican inside the race. Oh, I was like that. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> uh, you never know what's gonna happen in your event. Like, they could be on injury or. In that race, it could just run bad, and you just, you shouldn't give up. You should still push. Like, even if you know, even as this person like me, if I'm jumping, like, how I'm jumping 12, 3, 4 now, if I have someone jumping 13 or 14, I'm like, okay, I got to jump that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be up there with you. I'm going to try to be up there with you to give you a run for your money at least because I don't like to lose, but, like, I feel like if I push myself towards my goals and not just give up hope when I see Jamaican or when I see a Trinidad or Barbados. No matter like what that PB is, they gotta you gotta You gotta compete. You gotta that, that go right through me the, first. Yeah. Like you gotta you you may have jumped out on your island, but you gotta go through me to get up there again. So, so yeah. Make them earn it. Yeah. Make them earn it. Is that fail? Any more uh, just one last question. Um, well, for me, <laughs> what's one piece of advice that you would give to any up and coming track athlete? Because, like we say, we don't see you guys as the future; we see you as the now. Was one piece of advice that you would give to the up and coming track athletes? Um, like I said earlier, just to trust the process. Everything is not gonna come overnight. You're not just gonna step on the track and 
you you may be good, you may be talented, but there's still things you have to work on to actually achieve your goals. Things do not come overnight. You have to practice and you have to be patient. If something knock you down, who cares? Try out again the next time. If you're not good at this event, who cares? Try another event. You may excel in that one, you excel in the other one. Just trust the process and good things do happen in God's timing. Um, like she's saying, um, take it um, day by day. Take your time with it. Don't try to beat yourself up when you don't get it right away because that never helps. Just have fun. Learn it. Trust your coach. Uh, make friends along the way and just try to excel in whatever you want to do and know what you want to do first. Don't just be like, oh, I'm going here just because she's going to go there to do what you want to do and have fun with you what you want to have fun with. And just trust the process. Well, with new or like seasoned athletes, I would say learn to have more fun with the sport. And when you lose or don't do the right thing, don't beat yourself about it. Take it as a learning experience because it already happens. Why stress about something that you can't change? Just build, use it as confidence to build up yourself, to prepare to run or jump or throw for the next meet. Because personally, I feel like holding on to things just could, you know, hold you back. You're not the same man you were that last meet or yesterday. So I feel as if you shouldn't hold things in so tightly because it could mess with you mentally and, you know, discourage you. So, yeah. Good advice. <laughs> we have one final question. Uh, it's tradition for the fanatic islanders. We want to know what it is each of you are fanatical about at this time. Obviously winning, but, <laughs> you know. We we want to know if there's something specific you have in mind. And that's anything. It's, it doesn't have to be any yeah, sports or yeah. Anything that you are kind of fanatical or fanatic about right now. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean. It's crazy about something you really like or doing right now. <laughs> I feel like for me, it's to just drop a world lead. Like just one day, just stop playing with them. Wow. wow. <laughs> and like when I hit him I want to hit him hard cause yeah. like yeah I'm good now but the athlete that I am in Carifta and in my nation is not a worldwide I want to be the best in the world forget my nation so not forget my nation but you know I know what you mean <laughs> yeah I want to be the one to be like yeah that's me I'm up here come catch me if you can you want to photo on the airport yeah so yeah, the sky is in the limit. I'd break the sky. I don't care. So, yeah, sky. for me, <laughs> I'm going a, I'm to a make what you thought was impossible, possible. So, yeah, I want to drop a world lead. That's something that I really, really want to do. Whether it's in, sadly, the 800 or the 400, you know. And don't mind. Whatever, <laughs> whatever's working for me, I'm going to do it. I might not want to, but that's what's best. And I'm going to start to enjoy it one way or another. So, yeah. Okay, um, I'm fanatic about being successful, whether in school or in track. Like, I like to do well. I like to just have that, you know, little voice in my head. Okay, you did this. Like, it's time to go farther. Like, for triple jump right now, um, like Zion said, I don't want to just be the best in my country or the best in that state. Or that. I want to have a world record. I want to be up there with Shawnee, with Rojas. I want to be on that title with them. Um, I also kind of want to, I don't know, just have fun. Like, stay humble so that you can um, be successful. You can have this. You can have anything. You can have everything you want. Be rich and stay humble and just give back to others and encourage younger people or people who down themselves or like, oh, how you, how you get all of this and that. Just try to help them through it. Okay, for me, I'm fanatical. That's the word? Yep. Okay, <laughs> I want my name to be a name that's not forgotten, ever. Um, simply how simply how someone can say, oh, and I rule. I want people to know who that is. I want people to know that that was the first female to ever try pole vault. That's the first female to have a record. I want people to know who I am. 
and I want people to never forget. I also, hmm, I'm just, I just want to do good in life. I want to go off to college. I want to experience new things, experience new coaches, experience new things about, learn more things about pole vault that I don't know about now. I just want to travel the world more and just make more teams for the Bahamas. I want to add on real quick. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, I didn't know if I should say it, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> No, it's not nothing Break bad. Break the sky, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna like normally now. I don't. I I don't. I wouldn't say I would boast about oh winning and stuff, but I want it to be to the point where I don't have to talk. I don't normally talk, but I don't want to have to say anything. You just who is this guy? And you just look at the paper. You know, mm. you could say what you want to say about me, but when it comes to look at the paper, you be like, uh. He's consistent with this, that, and the next. Yeah. And he's doing this, that, and the next. So I want to be like to the point where oh gee, I don't have to say anything. Like, you know, let the papers and the social medias and everyone else be cocky for me while I just stay humble, you know? I want to, so I want my accomplishments to you know, <laughs> be out. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to say something about staying humble, being humble in track and field, being humble in any event. Or oh, sports is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Because you could have a good me today and you could have a bad me tomorrow. But if you had a good me that day and you were not humble, that's going to come back to bite you real hard. It really is. So you just have to be humble and you just have to be respectful to not only your teammates but the other track athletes that are around you. Because you never know when you're going to have a bad day or bad me unexpectedly. Okay, oh so sorry. Um, also with the humble, um, sometimes, not saying that I, I am a very humble person, but like, it's not easy just to, oh, take up that you want to be humble, especially in the country that we live in, where people always have something to say, or, oh, she's mad at you because you win, or you mad at her because she win and you want to say something. It's not easy to be humble. You want to, sometimes, I get that you want to, oh, yeah, talk now, and, uh, but sometimes you just got to let them run on with themselves. Because I've been back and forth. It's not going to help you get any faster. It's not going to help her or um, get up there at your level. It's not going to help you stoop down our level. It's not going to help nobody. So sometimes you just got to stay quiet and let it unfold. Yeah, that's facts. Because oh, I want to say a personal experience. I'm not going to call no names, but a personal experience. <laughs> I remember I was in the NASA. We was in the other place. If you know, you know type of thing. Uh <laughs> I got dipped out to the line, okay. and he shot a gun at me. Right? Oh, oh! Pull that out, man. <laughs> so, oh, oh! This was behind. Do we have no, a? No, do we have a? No, this was behind. This was in there. Okay, he didn't say it was in there. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, um, nationals was coming up. Oh, that's was. Mm-hmm. Ah. Go ahead. Junior nationals was coming up last year, so I was like, okay. You had to dip me out. You got to run something serious to beat me this time. So they put me in lean seven. And everyone was like, oh, sign. You in lean seven. You come second in your heat. Oh, ain't no man but you. Okay. I didn't say nothing. I watch him post every day the same video. I said, okay, cool. When that gun gone off. The first three steps, I caught lean eight, and I said, oh, yeah, that's it. And I just gone. And I dip and look at that clock. I see that 48 one. I said, oh, yeah. I look back. I see someone on the floor dying. And I see the time. I probably beat them, like, by half a second. So, yeah, you might have dipped me out that time. But I'm going to make sure you can't come too close Can to me the close. next week. You know? Every dog got its day. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. We have Zion, Bailey, and Anaya here yeah, talking about humility, sports, being spiritually grounded, and understanding what it is to represent the country. Please do give them your support and the entire Grifter team as they go and prepare to compete in the games in Grenada. 
If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching, listening on any audio platforms, please do leave us a five-star review. And also, please support our athletes. Like we say, these people here now are not the future of crypto, not the future track and field. They are the now. And we're looking forward to bigger and better things. This has been the Fanatic Islanders. Stay tuned. Any socials before y'all get world famous? <laughs> <laughs> My Instagram is that girl underscore Niall. Hello. Okay. T H A T G U R L underscore N A I A H. I think that's it. Ah. Uh, okay. My Instagram is cyan dot underscore Miller. Pretty simple. And shouts out to the best, the best. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, the best. <laughs> yeah, the best um sporting podcast there is. You know, I watched some of the videos and I actually kind of liked it because at first I was like, "Do I really want to go?" <laughs> but then, after I watched the videos, I was like, "Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in it. I like the vibe. You know, they're kind of cool." So yeah, stay in tune, keep watching. If you miss it, you just it. That's all. I'm <laughs> Okay, my Instagram is exo dot bailey b a y l i. Um, y'all should totally go follow me on there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have much to say, like, hey, but that's fine. Anyway, yeah. I just like to thank you both for this opportunity, and yes. thank you. Yes, thank oh, you for bringing yeah. us on the show, and you know, just making it comfortable for us, just to talk freely, and yes. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a uptight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had, we, we ain't that old. Before what that question is be uptight. <laughs> before I come in there, I was like, coach. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we must see what's real. Yeah, I think we. No think man. As soon as I stepped in, I was, I was like, ah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, it's okay. The, yeah, it's the gate. It's the gate. Yeah, it is <laughs> the gate. <laughs> 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This has been another Sound Bosses Down. Signing off. Okay. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below of how you felt about this video. Turn on your post notifications so you get notified every time they post a video. Ting! <laughs> Hopefully, we're back on the show. If y'all want to see more of my face, say that I saying, you know, let them know. Say that I saying, you know, yeah. I just let them know. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha